In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Today's Mass is offered for Theodora Nen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask of the St. Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Oh, 
Let's pray. Almighty God, who by the mission of the Bishop St. Augustine of Canterbury called the English people into the wondrous light of the Gospel, grant through his intercession, we pray, that faithful to that same Gospel proclaimed, we may strive to make known your truth and build up your Church on the foundations he laid. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brethren, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in the face of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from error or uncleanness, nor is it made with guile. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak, not to please men, but to please God, who tests our hearts. For we never used either words of flattery, as you know, or a cloak for greed, as God is witness. Nor did we seek glory from men, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse taking care of her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you had become very dear to us. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. <clears throat> the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him two by two into every town and place where he himself was about to come. And he said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and salute no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace shall rest upon him. But if not, it shall return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Today as we celebrate the great missionary to the English people, we look at the example that the Lord has in the gospel of the sending out of the apostles, and we see that truth then also lived out in the first reading for today in St. Paul in the letter to the Thessalonians. And so the Lord gives certain principles, and we've looked at some of these before, but some of them we'll just maybe look at um, a little bit more deeply. And so the Lord says, he sends them out first, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was to come. And as we've said before, he sends them out two by two because the principal emblem of the Christian is charity. And if someone cannot practice love and charity first, then they should not preach the gospel because their life is not yet in conformity with what, what they are now preaching to others. And so that act of charity is what must be their previous. It must precede the proclamation by words of the gospel because we must proclaim the gospel first by our love and by our charity and by the example of our life. And so the Lord sends them out two by two in order that their love for one another might manifest the fact that they are Christians. And he sends them out into every place where he himself is about to go. In the Greek it says he sends them out before his face, before his presence, because his word comes before his presence will rest. And so also, when the Lord is preached, he is received first by hearing before he enters into the heart. He is known and then he is loved. And so the proclamation of the gospel is in order to prepare the welcoming of the Lord into our hearts. And he says to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray that the Lord will send out laborers into his harvest. We've said this before, and also St. John Vianney makes the same point, which is that vocations and holy vocations are a gift from God or a response from God to the prayers of the faithful. And when the prayers are lacking, the vocations can be lacking. And so what the Lord is saying here is he is tying vocations to prayers of the faithful, that the faithful must pray for laborers in the harvest. And then he speaks to them of the dangers that they will face, but also in terms of what they must not carry with them. He acknowledges that he is sending them out into great danger. And that is true with regards to the gospel. The Lord sends us out as lambs in the midst of wolves. But in this, he is also giving us the disposition that we must have when we proclaim the gospel. We must be like lambs. I think it was St. Gregory, he says, anyone who proclaims the gospel must not be a wolf, meaning 
He must, not, must never cause any evil to anyone, but rather must endure evil. That is what the Christian is supposed to do when we proclaim the gospel. Be like lambs in the midst of wolves and not become like wolves. And then he speaks to them about the great gift that they have, which requires nothing else earthly. They have all the treasures of heaven and the good news with them, and so they have no need of anything else because providence will provide earthly needs. They carry with themselves the treasures of eternal life. And so the Lord strips them of everything that is earthly because he has now clothed them with everything that is heavenly. And then he says, whatever house you enter, say first, peace be to this house. St. Gregory has a really interesting line on this. He says that peace is the mother of all good things. So that all good things can only be truly enjoyed when we are at peace. When we are at peace. And so peace is the first thing that has to enter into hearts so that everything good can truly be enjoyed. And this doesn't mean an exterior peace because the Christian can live in a state of peace even in the midst of great turmoil. It's not about exterior peace. It's about the interior peace of the heart that the Lord is speaking of here. Peace be to this house. Peace be to this heart. Peace be to this mind. And the Lord shows a great power here, which is that he accompanies the words of the apostles, the proclamation of the gospel, with actual grace. And so when they say the words, peace be to this house, the Lord's peace moves out in order to rest upon that house. That is the great power of the gospel that we proclaim. It is living word. It contains within itself a power to accomplish that which is proclaimed. And so when we read the words of the gospel, they are active in us. If we are looking for peace within our own souls, read the words of the gospel, pray with them, meditate upon them, and allow them to be active within our hearts and within our minds. And then that same power, that same peace, which went, with, which went out with the initial proclamation of the gospel, can also then rest in our own hearts. What is very beautiful, just to close, is that we see in the example of St. Paul in the first reading for today that he lives according to all of these precepts. That he travels two by two and he practices charity and love. But it is also love that compels him to go out and call souls and he has no other motivation. He says here, he did not go out in order to preach flattery that he might please men, but rather that he might please God. He didn't preach that he might gain anything in terms of monetary value or monetary returns, but he proclaimed solely for love, a love to which he proclaims here that he would lay down his own life for the sake of those to whom he is preaching. And so St. Paul gives us the example of what the Lord teaches in the gospel today, to go out with the gospel within us, to go out in love and to proclaim the gospel for the sake of love and charity and for no other earthly gain but what the Lord will give us in eternity. And to do this all because we go to proclaim the gospel so that Christ, Christ might be welcomed and that he might be loved in all hearts. Amen.